It's my favorite time of year for being sad. The Grammys are rapidly approaching, so let's do another check-in on them. How last year's show went, any changes to their voting process, and who's most likely to win this year. Part 1. The 2022 Show Last year's show was delayed due to COVID for the second year in a row, forcing the Academy to move it from LA to LV. The setup was a mix of the standard Grammy Bonanzi and the more intimate presentation of the 2021 show, with the ground floor containing all the big and famous nominees, and the the arena seats housing everyone else. I do miss the Jules Holland-esque approach of the 2021 show, but this wasn't a bad compromise. As for the show itself, <laughs> Doja Cat made a funny pee joke, Silk Sonic were great, Billy was great, Lady Gaga doing a tribute to Tony Bennett was sweet, BTS was great, and the intro to their performance of Butter was cute, especially this bit where one of the guys flirts with Olivia Rodrigo. Aside from that, I don't really remember much from it. Olivia Rodrigo got Best New Artist, yes, good, thank you. Silk Sonic got both record and song, and they also did this. Oh, I love them so much. But yeah, pretty safe and predictable picks, all of them. We are John Batiste! <laughs> it's fine. Yes, John Batiste's We Are won Album of the Year over Evermore, Sour, Happier Than Ever, and a bunch more records that don't make you go... Uh, yeah, that came out. Look, I have nothing against John. He's a wonderful musician, which is clear from his stint on The Late Show and his film score work. We Are just didn't make much of an impact on me, and I would have personally picked another record if I was the sole voting body of the Recording Academy. Though beyond any statements of subjective quality, I will say John is the first black person to win Album of the Year since Herbie Hancock in that is unabashedly a good thing, and I am glad that particular streak has ended. Now can we please get a rap album to win for the first time since 2004? Part 2. Any changes to the Grammys? The biggest change leading into last year's show was the removal of nominations review committees. These were the secretive groups that touched up the nominations for certain categories, like the Big Four, though the Academy proved last year that they could still get freaky even without those committees. This year's ceremony does not have a major shift like that, but there are still some changes that are worth highlighting. In June 2022, the Academy rolled out new categories, including Songwriter of the Year Non-Classical, Best Alternative Music Performance, and Best Spoken Word poetry album. There were also new voting fees applied to excess entries, new craft committees in the classical categories, and an update for album eligibility. In past years, an album had to have at least 50% newly recorded, previously unreleased songs. From here on out, it has to have at least 75%. The coolest change for me personally was the addition of the best score soundtrack for video games and other interactive media. It's so incredibly neat to see video game music officially recognized by the Academy. The Inaugural nominees are a good bunch too, though I would love to see retroactive Grammys given to Persona 5, No Straight Roads, Cuphead, Mario Kart 8, Donkey Kong Country, every 3D Mario game since Galaxy, and Voodoo Vince. While we're talking about this year's nominees, Part 3, the 2023 nominations. Let's get this out of the way, the 2023 Grammy nominations are an improvement over last year's because Spoon is nominated for the first time ever. Don't you dare leave a comment saying Machine Gun Kelly will beat them, let us snare, be hopeful. In my view, there were three big points of discussion when it came to these nominations, and the most surprising has to do with who wasn't there. On purpose. Oh. Silk Sonic announced that they would not submit their 2021 album for Grammy consideration. I was a little bummed by this at first, but then I remembered how much they won last year. They're not hurting for Grammys or anything. I also realized that if it were not for one particular artist, Silk Sonic would have likely been a shoe in for Album of the Year this year. Them taking a step back this year was somehow both a nice gesture and a total power move, which feels like the Silk Sonic MO at this point. So well done, boys. The the second big dust storm was over Best Rap Album. Kendrick Lamar, Pusha T, and Future all seemed like fine picks, but there was also DJ Khaled and Jack Harlow. DJ Khaled's nomination feels silly to me. It's as if the Academy heard him yell, we the best music! and then said, "Oh, geez, how could we not include him? He the best music. He said so himself. Jack's nomination is a bit scarier, because I think he has a pretty good chance of winning. So allow me to make my case real quick. Recording Academy, listen to me. Over the past decade, you have seen the ramifications of giving this award to a white man over Kendrick Lamar. 
please don't give it to Jack, okay? I'm, I'm not saying this as a fan of his. I think he's all right. That record he put out last year wasn't that great. But if if you do this, if you give this award to Jack, you're going to ruin him. You will cement him as the Macklemore of the 2020s. Don't do that to him. And finally, the Song of the Year category, which included TikTok hit, a, B, C, D, E, F, U by Gale. So many people out there clutching their pearls over this, pining for a time when a Grammy award really meant something. Being real for a sec, if there's one source of Grammy outrage that really annoyed me this year, it's this one. I think it annoys me so much because it truly is us reliving discourse that is not only as old as time, but should also be buried under the crypto.com arena which is somehow still named that. Also, it annoys me because most of the discourse was on TikTok, and I've come to the realization that TikTok just pisses me off. This is an anecdotal example, but I saw someone on there who was showing off the full Song of the Year nominee list, and they were like, look at the caliber of all these other artists. She's totally gonna lose. Yeah, almost all of them are gonna lose. They're gonna hold a ceremony soon where they announce that one of these songs has won, and thus, the rest have lost? If you were angered by Gail's nomination, I hear you, I see you, and I hope maybe this feeling inspires you to look into the Grammys and their history and realize that wild card nominations like this are just always going to happen. They are baked into the organization. Try to have some fun with it. Part four predictions. Let's start with the big one, Album of the Year. We've got ABBA's Voyage, Adele's 30, Bad Bunny's Un Verano Sinti, Beyonce's Renaissance, Mary J. Blige's Good Morning Gorgeous, Brandi Carlile's In These Silent Days, Coldplay's Music of the Spheres, Kendrick Lamar's Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, Lizzo's Special, and Harry Styles' Harry House. So who do I think is going to win? Adele. It's Adele. It's Adele. It's going to be Adele. She has been a Grammy darling for her past two albums. 30 was her best record since 21, if not ever. I think the Academy is going to reward what's tried and true because that's what they've always awarded. Adele is going to win this. As for who I want to win, Beyonce for sure. Kendrick would also be nice. Or Bad Bunny. Him winning in this category would mark the first win for an album primarily sung in a language other than English, and that would be pretty cool. And to cover my bases and predict an off the wall chaotic win, ABBA. I think ABBA could definitely win as a legacy pick. Or for a stupid reason, like they're alphabetically first and they're the easiest artist to vote for when an Academy member is reading the list. The only reason I think they won't is because the Grammys usually don't do the insane oddball pick twice in a row for the same category. Still, ABBA has a decent shot. Coldplay could do it too for the same reason. Next up is Song of the Year, which rewards songwriting. There's A B C D E F U by Gale, About Damn Time by Lizzo, All Too Well, 10 Minute Version, The Short Film by Taylor Swift, As It Was by Harry Styles, Bad Habit by Steve Lacey, Break My Soul by Beyonce, Easy On Me by Adele, God Did by DJ Khaled, The Heart Part 5 by Kendrick Lamar, and Just Like That by Bonnie Raitt. I think this is a three-way toss-up between Adele, Taylor, and Harry. Again, Adele is tried and true, and she knows how to write a songwriter's kind of written song. And As It Was, was one of the few genuine big new hits from 2022. I also want to call attention to the fact that the version of All Too Well nominated is not just the 10 minute version, but the 10 minute version from the short film. Song on its own, garbage. Throw in an argument between Sadie Sink and Dylan O'Brien, that's a Grammy nominee right there. For who I want to win, I'd be very happy with Beyonce, Steve Lacey, or Kendrick Lamar taking this one. For the chaos pick, Gale, easily. If that song wins, the music discourse on TikTok will be so toxic that I'll have to get off the app for a week. Which, as I'm saying it out loud, would actually be pretty great. You know what, I'm putting Gail in the want to win section just for that. For record of the year, which rewards production, mixing, and mastering, we've got Don't Shut Me Down by ABBA, Easy On Me by Adele, Break My Soul by Beyonce, Good Morning Gorgeous by Mary J. Blige, You and Me on the Rock by Brandy Carlisle and Lucius, Woman by Doja Cat, Bad Habit by Steve Lacey, The Heart Part 5 by Kendrick Lamar, About Damn Time by Lizzo, and As It Was by Harry Styles. Since we're talking production, I'm thinking either Beyonce or Adele is gonna get this, but I'm rooting for Beyonce, Steve Lacey, or Kendrick. Truth be told, I hope Steve walks away with at least one award in any category. Bad Habit was another one of the few hits from 2022 to actually feel like a hit. He wrote a good song, he put in his dues, he got scorched over the flames of TikTok. Give him some reward for it all, please. 
Ortiz for wild cards either Abba or Brandy Carlisle. Though a part of me wants to see Brandy win because it would mean Lucius also wins a Grammy. Their record from last year was pretty good. Check it out if you have it. Finally, there's Best New Artist. Anita, Omar Apollo, Domi and JD Beck, Money Long, Samara Joy, Lotto, Mona Skin, Toby Nwigwi, Molly Tuttle. This whole time I thought her name was Molly Turtle. And Wet Leg. Huh. You know, usually with this category, there's one artist who towers above the rest as the one who is definitely going to win. This year, I don't see a clear winner. The closest thing to a frontrunner for me is Anita? I'd be incredibly happy if Domi and JD Beck win. I'd be pretty happy if Wet Leg win. And for the chaos pick, Monokin, I guess? Do we like Monokin? I mentally tuned out after Began got big, and then when I checked back in, it was when this new record of theirs came out, and that's gotten pretty rough reviews. Yes, indeed, I do believe this would bring sufficient chaos into the world. So who do you think is gonna win at this year's Grammys? Who are you rooting for? Who do you think got snubbed? Let me know any and all thoughts in the comments down below, and if you want to learn more about the Grammys, their history, their voting process, check out my video on that.